Welcome to the Sunday Painter, the channel about everything painting. I've handpicked videos from YouTube, from how to paint to making money from your art, with advice from seasoned artists. Check out my channel, you can't go wrong by subscribing, may save years of struggle. Today we are going to learn about Titian. Here are a few quotes you can use in your art from the grand artist himself. Those who are compelled to paint by force, without being in the necessary mood, can produce only ungainly works, because this profession requires an unruffled temper. The painter must always seek the essence of things, always represent the essential characteristics and emotions of the person he is painting. It is not bright colors but good drawing that makes figures beautiful. Stay around to the end and hear my thoughts, you can use them to improve your work by studying Titian. Come and improve your art and expand your knowledge. Become a part of the Best Art channel and leave a happy comment or let me know if there is an artist you would like to learn about. See you, on the other side. The Sunday Painter No one knows exactly when the Italian artist, Tiziano Baccellio, was born or as we know him, Titian. Now over the centuries, there has been a great deal of confusion concerning the date, due to a misprint in his biography by 16th-century art historian, Giorgio Vasari. Vasari recorded the date as 1480, other documented sources, announce his date of birth to be sometime between 1488 and 1490. He lived to be 88 years old. To give you a better idea of the time, he was born after da Vinci and was around 40 years old when Leonardo passed on in 1519 at the age of 67. He also had the opportunity to see firsthand the places that Michelangelo and Raphael had seen and created their artwork. Titian, was a great master of religious art, a portraitist, and the creator of mythological compositions, which have been so decorative and inventive that no other artist has yet surpassed. He used color and light to define his forms instead of lines. He created various masterpieces throughout his experiences, which are still widely known today. Titian produced splendid spiritual, fabulous, and portrayal pictures, original and construct and vivid with color and motion. Titian trained under two other seminal Venetian artists, Giovanni Bellini and Giorgione. The latter, with whom Titian also collaborated, was influential for his tonal approach to painting and for his landscape style, which was atmospheric and evocative. Titian's portraits are remarkable for the way in which they seem to express a psychological dimension while also suggesting something of the sitter's status and importance. His earliest portraits follow Giorgione in the melancholy or dreamy mood with a fuzzy softness. Titian also painted works with mythological subjects for domestic settings, he often called these poesie, likening them to visual poetry. Giorgio Vasari, wrote about Titian. Tiziano, then, having adorned with excellent pictures the city of Venice, nay, all Italy and other parts of the world, deserves to be loved and revered by the craftsmen, and in many things to be admired and imitated, as one who is executed and is still executing works worthy of infinite praise, which shall endure as long as the memory of illustrious men may live. During the last 26 years of his life, 1550-1576, Titian worked mainly for Philip II and as a portrait painter. He became more self-critical, an insatiable perfectionist, keeping some pictures in his studio for 10 years, returning to them and retouching them, constantly adding new expressions at once more refined, concise, and subtle. He also finished many copies that his pupils made of his earlier works. This caused problems of attribution and priority among versions of his works, which were also widely copied and faked outside his studio during his lifetime and afterwards. Titian's brush strokes became looser, and his colors and textures more atmospheric. These last works especially show their effects on subsequent art movements like the Baroque period, what Titian started to do in his final working years had lasting effects on the course of Western art history. Titian freed the use of color and brushstrokes to an unprecedented degree that inspired both contemporaries like Tintoretto and El Greco, as well as succeeding artists like Rubens and Delacroix. Titian's Painting Technique I would say, Michelangelo for form, and Titian for color. During the course of his long life, Titian's artistic manner changed drastically but he retained a lifelong interest in color. Although his mature works may not contain the vivid, luminous tints of his early pieces, their loose brushwork and subtlety of tone are without precedent. The palette of Titian, as recorded by his pupil, 
Palma Vecchio, had nine pigments, for his blues, lapis lazuli, natural ultramarine or lazurite, malachite, for green, burnt sienna, lead tin yellow, yellow, Italian yellow earth, yellow ochre, red, vermilion, red ochre, lead white, bone black or vine black. Titian created a sense of dimension in his work. By painting subjects so that they became smaller and appeared to vanish into the distance, and added depth and the illusion of roundedness. The painting seemed to come alive, to show real life and people, not two-dimensional painted shapes. Blurred edges on distant objects mimic the effect of the atmosphere on what the eye could see. Vivid color in the foreground, gradually fading into murkier blues and greens in the background, enhance the distant vista. Modulating the use of color, in particular, using tones both darker and lighter than the dominant hue, could deepen and enrich the appearance of the hue. Using an underpainting that was almost completely finished without color and gray tones, Titian used glazes to give his works the rich glow we know him for. Now let's talk about what you can take away from Titian. As a teacher I want to talk about glazing. Let's say for instance, you have a beautiful rendered black and white painting that looks like a marble sculpture. You start adding color, having in mind that the underpainting will show through a thin glaze of color like a church window. This is not the case, some colors glaze better than others. Glazing is a slow buildup of color over color. The Mona Lisa has up to 30 glazes in areas. New artists have in their mind that if I have a finished underpainting all I have to do is add one color and it would be done. This is still not the case. Let's go back to your finished underpainting. Titian used a lead white which we don't have in our time for health reasons, but we do have flake white. Which is our equivalent. I'm going to try to explain this the best way I can, about how to use flake white, if you need more information leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer the best I can. White can lighten your hues but this is not how to use white. We use mediums to give our paints a thick or thinness on what we need to paint. Flake white works the same way. You use white in your glazes. White gives your paint a body and helps the glaze to become smoother and easier to work with. It covers without covering the underpainting totally. You can still keep it very thin and your painting will not look blotchy. Ask yourself this question, why did we make an underpainting if we are going to cover it up? Going back to Titian's time, paints were not as processed as they are today. Even after the Renaissance the paints got better and the artist realized they did not need an underpainting to complete their work. Think about this, black and white are opaque colors and it was easy to render dark darks and light lights. Titian used the underpainting to get these lights and darks which is hard to achieve in certain colors. The dark and lights give any form the roundness on a two-dimensional plane. When a painting in this style is done right, the light will shine through the many layers to make the stained glass look and the painting will glow when the sun strikes the surface. As with anything there is much more to Titian, I hope you learned something and subscribe to the Sunday Painter to make your work the best it can be. Thanks for watching.